I've seen a lot of people, Sandhya, including some relatives, family, friends, as they get really old, in that last bit, and they have regrets in life. I didn't live a life that mattered. One part of that regret is I didn't help more people. I wasn't more generous. And I said, look, I really don't want to and look back at life that way. So I, I find that I, I get a lot of joy from helping and giving. So that's one good reason for everybody to do it. And it doesn't matter how small you start, start, start with whatever you feel comfortable with. And then there's a magic that happens. Okay? And gradually your fist unclenches. You're able to give more. couple years, you and I have had many conversations about entrepreneurship, leadership, culture, but it's mostly been from an organizational lens. Today, our conversation is going to be slightly different. It's perhaps the most personal to you at this point, your journey to making philanthropy front and center amongst all of the things that you're doing. And hopefully the series from spare change to real change focused on all of the causes that you're supporting will inspire more people to start giving. I want to start Ravi by asking you, you supported causes before, it's not like giving is new, but this time there seems to be a big shift to how you approached giving. What's different this time and why? Like a lot of people, you know, giving is both intensely personal and a journey. So, um, yeah. you know, my journey was fairly typical. Like I was intensely focused on my professional life and a little bit on my personal life. And I had no time to think about these issues. What's the state of the world and, you know, what needs there are and what I should do about it. Uh, you know, from time to time, I would find a cause or a person which appealed to my heart and I'd write a small check. And this is how it was till about 2011. Uh, and it, the only excuse I have is I was really busy, but I think it's a poor excuse. After 2011, when I decided I'm no longer going to be an employee, I'm going to you know, enjoy my time and use it to pursue things I care about. For the first time, I had this luxury of thinking about mm -hmm about things and reading deeply and having conversations and I began to realize that in fact there's an ocean of needs out there and I'm in a fortunate position where you know I can make some dents in it and so I you know became much more serious and intentional about um, what I gave and how I gave and so forth and in the beginning I you know I focused on giving things like time and expertise. For instance, I started an organization called Social Venture Partners in Bangalore. This was about trying to get mm -hmm. other people who are in the same stage of life, you know, 45 plus, they're feeling reasonably successful, they want to give back, but they don't know where to start, who to give. So I said, look, let's all uh, get on the same journey together. And so, so we started something called SVP and that's been hugely successful. And I grew and learned a lot from that process of giving in a more disciplined way and at a slightly larger level. But I think things have really it's sort of come together or my thinking has really changed in the last two or three years for a variety of reasons. COVID mm -hmm. was a, quite an alarm call for me, A, because you know all of us suddenly had to confront our own mortality, young, old, it didn't matter. Yeah. Um, and so I said, look, there's no guarantee you're going to figure this out later and then get to do it. Okay. So whatever you want to do, do it now. The second thing that changed was the, the tech meltdown last year. Mm -hmm. So 
most of my money is still in uh, passively in tech stocks. And suddenly last year, for no reason, I was one third poorer. Nothing had changed except the valuation of some paper had changed. And that was, a, yeah, yeah. again, like a, a penny drop for me. And I said, what a fool you are if you had given it away at that time. So many people would have been better off. And then the third one was uh, turning 60. I turned mm -hmm. 60 earlier this year. And I said, look, um, today 60 is still relatively, you know, I wouldn't say young, but it's not old, somewhere in between. Yeah. But again, it's now time to start giving at a much greater level because there's no point suddenly kicking the bucket and then leaving all your money to somebody else to give it away and get all the joy. So Sonali, my wife and I decided, let, you know, let's start now, start giving at a much, much higher level. So that's kind of the journey. That's where we are. There is the point where you make this decision. Like you said, the penny dropped uh, from the penny dropping to then saying, no, you know, I'm going to be serious and intentional about this. What have you done in the last year, Ravi, about really focusing your efforts in, in, in an intentional way in, in, to giving away some of your wealth? So first is there's a supply side to this, uh, to making this happen. Yeah. And, and then there's a uh, demand side. What I mean is, so I decided uh, a year ago that as a good start, let me just start giving away 100% of my income every year. Okay. Mm. So, okay, I'm not yet reaching into my uh, little treasure chest of savings, but I'm now giving 100% of what I make, okay? And it turns out to be a reasonable amount. And so I feel good. On the other side, who do you give it to? And mm. that's, a, that's actually an interesting problem because there's an ocean of needs out there, okay? And so yeah. who do you give it to? Secondly, in, in, you know, there's who's deserving, who, there's lots of fraudsters, there's a lot of waste. So what I did is I got hold of a young mentee of mine, a young man called Rishabh Lalani, who's sort of uh, pretty amazing because at a young age, he's, this is all he does. And I said, Rishabh, I'm interested in these causes. For instance, I'm interested in access to justice and, you know, rule of law. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in education of children particularly yeah, children with disabilities or young women uh, i want to help more people go to college who are needy and deserving i care about conservation that means the environment and all that so in these causes find me organizations that are have some characteristics okay i said one mm -hmm. is I, want, I don't i want them on the front lines okay that means they're directly helping and serving, okay? That because those are the most efficient. That's where every rupee you give uh, actually uh, makes a big difference. So what happened is uh, Rishabh nicely, um, you know, did a lot of work and curated organizations based on cause. And then what we did this year is um, in J Jan, Feb, March, I, he arranged for me to have conversations with the a lot of these organizations and I went then with my emotions where did I feel resonance and mm -hmm. that was the most important everything else is intellect tick box criteria and all that but this was heart and I'm glad that yeah. we're going to be speaking to uh, some of these amazing people in the course of this series how do you see philanthropy at large do you see it as a moral imperative of the haves. I generally don't like um, sort of moralistic things and because there's judgment mm -hmm. there's guilt and all that. For me, philanthropy is very, very practical. And also, mm -hmm. in a funny way, it's all about self-interest. So the first reason to give and the reason I give is because I feel better when I do. I've seen a lot of people, Sandhya, including some relatives, family, friends, as they get really old, that last bit, and they have regrets in life. You know, I, should have, mm -hmm. I didn't live a life that mattered. One part of that regret is I didn't help more people. I wasn't more generous. And I said, look, I really don't want to and look back at life that way. So 
I, I find that I, I get a lot of joy from helping and giving. So that's one good reason for everybody to do it. And it doesn't matter how small you start, start, start with whatever you feel comfortable with. And then there's a magic that happens. Okay? And gradually your fist unclenches. You're able to give more. I think there's a second reason, which is also, I think, <laughs> selfish or self-interest, which is luck. Mm -hmm. well, if you think about it, each of us, anybody who's tuning into this, is incredibly lucky. You can sort of say, no, 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 it's the result of my hard work, my genius, my talent and all that stuff. The reality is, there's just an incredible amount of good luck and there's no guarantee it'll continue. So my rationale is the only way of making sure there is, you know, good luck going forward is this idea of pay forward. Okay. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't in any way give back to your parents who may or may not even be around anymore to the teachers who helped you and all those people but what you can do is pay forward and that's make sure that the cycle is closed and this flywheel of good luck will, will continue i don't know if it's true it's what i believe no i i couldn't agree more intuitively makes sense right you pass that forward and yeah. the third practical reason is if you look around us particularly those of us who live in india um, there are a lot of dysfunctions in society. There's just incredible mm -hmm. inequality. There's incredible wealth living cheek by jowl with uh, incredible poverty. Um, you've got you know, bad governance, corruption, lack of access to justice. The performing arts are withering away. Um, you know, there's less and less CSR money. And so you can't pretend that you will, you can live in a cocoon, a little bubble, where everything is going to be great. If you live in a dysfunctional society, that dysfunction is going to affect your life sooner or later. So I said, look, we better, you know, all do what we can to make the society in which we all live it a little bit healthier. So those are my personal rationalizations for philanthropy. And I wouldn't yeah. come at it from a moral, you must do it or you're a bad person. I think do it because it helps you feel better. The idea of philanthropy somehow has been linked to wealthy people, rich people. And you and I have had conversations offline that, you know, the idea of giving doesn't necessarily have to be linked to your first million dollars. You kind of alluded to it when you said it could start with small amounts, but I'd like to focus this part of the conversation to how somebody who hasn't who isn't a billion dollars wealthy can start thinking about philanthropy because that term can be a little bit you know overwhelming i think this this notion of philanthropy that you have articulated is a very american idea of philanthropy and it's also yes a somewhat modern idea it's only in the last century or so that we've had billionaires like rockefeller uh, or Carnegie, yeah. all. but this is very recent, and as I said, it's more American than uh, you know, East or even European uh, idea. So, I think forget about big words like philanthropy. It's about giving and helping, yeah. Yeah. and that's that's just a way of being. So, on. number two, this idea of rich is a very interesting one. Rich to me, more and more means it's a feeling not a number okay mm -hmm. so somebody who has no great money or in fact may have no money can be rich because they have abundance they are generous and equally we know people who have huge amounts of wealth they're just so miserable clinging on to it so my point is rich is nothing to do with your bank balance or your income it's about how you feel and this, this idea, therefore, is about a scarcity mindset versus an abundance mindset. And if you put these things together, what I would say is no matter where, what your station is in life, whether you're a student with you know, not much or whether you're a little bit further along, just start giving. And in the beginning, give whatever From you spare want. change to real change, in yeah, a sense. Start with spare change, right. whatever you feel comfortable with. And don't feel like, oh, it's too small or not. Just do it, okay? 
don't put judgment on it. And what you'll find over time is it becomes easier to give more. That progression will happen. It is inevitable. The other thing I want to say is money is important. But uh, as uh, our friend uh, Nipun Mehta said, there are many forms of wealth. So a smile, giving a smile can ch change another person's life. Okay. So let's not just value the financial part of it. So smile, love, time, you know, giving of yourself, expertise, whatever. All these are different forms of wealth. And the more you get into the habit of just giving, the more it'll become part of who you are and the better you'll feel about yourself. And the more I think you'll find that your relationship with the world and other people changes. Is there a cause that's closer to your heart than others? There is um, a cause that is close to my heart and there's a, cl a cause which is close to my mind. The heart is actually... You know, young people, children um, who are in some form of distress or denied opportunity. And I particularly go out to the, you know, my heart goes out to the girl child, goes out particularly to any kid with disabilities. Uh, but generally that has stayed with me for the longest time. It's why I took on that UNICEF role for five years. Uh, so I, I, I just think children are so beautiful, so vulnerable, they deserve all the help that's the hard part the head part is actually the um, this uh, access to justice i mm. think this is, a, this is a crisis in our country and i like to say that it doesn't matter how powerful and rich you are or how poor and marginalized you and weak you are any encounter with the judicial system or the police system is going to leave you feeling uh, quite uh, ravaged you cannot have a country of 1.4 billion people which wants to be a major economy 5 trillion 10 trillion built on a foundation of sand where citizens cannot count on access to justice okay so this is a cause that consumes me greatly it is enormously complex but it is the foundation of us of any kind of reasonable society any democracy and so i'm trying to find ways to support that what is this focused effort to giving taught you about yourself did you learn something about yourself i learned a lot about myself i think perhaps talking of just one thing i realized how uncomfortable i was with money I'm, i was never very greedy mm -hmm. so money never motivated me but i was always a little mm -hmm. paranoid or insecure about running out of money um okay mm -hmm. because i think this world can be very very cruel if you don't have some money. But I realized this has stayed with me too long. I should outgrow this. So this is what I write about moving from a scarcity mindset to an abundance mindset. And I think being more serious about and intentional about all this giving has uh, profoundly helped me make that shift. Lovely. Thanks, Ravi. And uh, really the call to action is anyone listening and wondering about how they start giving you know, this is a starting point for them from spare change yeah. to real change. Thank yeah. you. I want to thank you for doing this. But, you know, what I'm hoping is that people will be inspired. You know, I've done the due diligence. I've put my own money and therefore they should feel confident that their contributions will also be put to good use. Thanks, Ravi.